Okay, uh, welcome to our third lab. So in this lab, we will use Tableau desktop to visualize and also analyze data in a relational database. We will also get familiar with different type of the charts that we mentioned uh, in our lecture. So let's first st start the desktop. And this time we are going to make a connection to our relational database. So we are using a post SQ post GRE so called server, which actually is hosted on uh, Amazon website. So it's hosted on RDS, AWS RDS. So let's open a desktop, and you can see here the post GRE so called is one of the uh, server that is supported in Tableau. So let's select that one. And I already filled in the information earlier. So however, so you can find those information that uh, from Canvas. So and that is the URL of the host. Um, and also pod, that is default pod for post -trade circle. So that is uh, 5432. And the database name, I just use uh, post GRES as the database name. And uh, we we'll choose the user password um, as the authentication method. The username is demo and also the password is also on canvas. OK, so let's sign in. Uh, if you remember, this is actually the same server that we used in the uh, data mining class so that here you can still see the tables that you created uh, in the last semester. Uh, because we have a lot of tables, so let's use a search and we are looking for the house price. So let's type house. And now you can see the table that the house price for. And let's drag that one to the view. And right now we are looking at the data that uh, from our uh, database database directly. So let's update. We can see we have more than 600 rows. So which, which actually is a, is a very small uh, data set. So we have ID, price, area, uh, lot size which of course contains some um, wrong, uh, inconsistent information. So some are using square foot, some are using acres. The year that has been built. So let's switch that one to date. OK, uh, number of bathrooms, number of bedrooms, and also house type. OK, so let's go to our sheet. OK. So now we can see we have the house year being built um, and also house type and also ID, which are considered uh, dimensions, which is pretty nice. We have the area of the house. We also have the price of the house. Uh, so if you remember in the previous lab that we can add a new field uh, so that to calculate the unit price, which is price divided by area. So we can also do that in Tableau desktop. So if we, we go to the analysis and we can create a new calculated field. OK, uh, so let's call it a uh, unit price. Which equals the price divide by the area. OK, uh, let's click OK. So now we have uh, one more column, uh, one new field that you need price, which it also matters. OK, that's nice. So let's first create a bar chart, see the number of records. So if we just simply click, double click the number of records, we have a bar chart. OK, and if we drag the type of house into colors, we have a stacked bar chart, you can see the uh, the different house types, okay, in different colors. Okay, so that is not actually helpful. So we can also put the house type into different columns. Okay, so now we can see the, the different type of the number of the records of different house types. Okay, uh, and also as we said in the lecture, so it's not easy to read those labels. So let's rotate on this bar chart. And also as a best practice, let's sort the bar chart. OK, so that we know that, OK, so the single family home has a, uh, the most popular house type in our data set. 
And in Tableau, you can also exclude some specific fields. For, so for example, if you don't want to see the land a lot, you just click the land a lot and you can exclude that one. OK, so we can make a filter that just excluded land a lot. OK, so let's undo that. And we can also combine some um, red fields together as a new group. So for example, if I select both townhouse and also land a lot, and you can see this clip icon, so we can group those members. OK, so now you can see we have a new a field that is land a lot. Okay, so that adds a new field in this um, bar chart. Okay, so that's also something that we can do. Uh, again, let's undo that. Uh, we can also add colors actually if you like. So, for example, if we put the unit price into colors and it, let's choose the average price. Okay. And you can also change uh, the color schema. So for example, if I choose orange. So here I can see that for the unit price, a single family has the highest unit price, average unit price. And followed by the condo, followed by the townhouse, and which actually makes sense. And the cheapest are the land a lot, because there are no uh, house that been built yet. OK, and let's also drag the colors out. Um, and we can also edit those axes. So this, let's call it number uh, records. OK, uh, in this case, let's just hide the title. OK, so that is our, our first uh, bar chart. So you can see we can add colors, uh, we can change, uh, we can group some fields together, or we can exclude some fields uh, from our bar chart. All right, next, uh, let's say we want to see that how the uh, unit price are being distributed. So let's click unit price. And this time, let's go to show me. And you can see you can create bar chart or you can create a histogram. So let's create histogram. We can see it looks like a normal distribution in this part, but we do have some outliers there. OK, so that is the histogram that's been created. Uh, and also they also create a bin for us automatically. So we can also adjust the bin. So for example, the size of the bin uh, is this one. Uh, so we can also adjust the size. So let's say we, if we choose that one to be 20. OK, so now we have a bin of 20. OK, and we can see the most of the uh, price are around uh, 175 okay, dollars. Uh, so because those are uh, dollars so we can also change the format okay and we can change the format here so just right click the axis and for the numbers so let's say we want to change that one to um, currency okay uh, and the next remember that we also mentioned we can also add a accumulated percentage line to this histogram. OK, uh, so that is this is this will be a little bit advanced uh, calculation in Tableau. So uh, just follow with me. Um, be careful here. So so first, let's hit control key. And let's duplicate the count of the price and also remove. OK, so now we added a new rows that beneath our histogram. So we duplicated the histogram. And for this one, so instead of using the uh, the count of the number of unit of the number of the prices in each range, we're going to use a table calculation. OK, so we'll talk about the table calculation later. So uh, here, let's say we want to use a percentage 
sorry, so, so here let's say we want to use uh, the wrong in total. Okay, so here we can see that number of records are wrong in total that in each range. So starting with very five, next 10, 20, uh, 68, etc. And next, we want to see the accumulated percentage. So let's edit this table calculation. And let's add a secondary calculation. And this time, we're going to use the percentage of the total. All right. And now let's close that. So now let's see the values. So we can say first is less than 1%. And 20%, okay, 86%, etc. And however, for this one, the, the bar chart is not the best marker. So let's change that one to a line chart. Okay, so this is a cumulated percentage of total. We can see that 50% uh, is about here. So next, we want to put this line combine this one to, uh, to this uh, count of the price. So in Tableau, to combine two charts together is called uh, dual axis. OK, dual axis. So let's click uh, this one and uh, uh, check dual axis. All right, so now we have this uh, very nice dual axis. And you can, of course, change the colors. So for this line chart, uh, uh, let's switch that one. So let's use. Um, OK, so we I just switched the color so that I use uh, uh, this orange to show the line, the accumulated percentage. And also I use the blue to show this uh, histogram. And now if you look at 50 percent, so that is about here. OK, so the most of the uh, price of the house, that price is below uh, $175 per square feet. OK, so that is our histogram. Again, this is a little bit advanced. Uh, so we will come back to the table calculations and also dual axis maps uh, visualizations later. All right, let's move on. Uh, next, let's say we want to see the relationship between the price and also area. So we know that if the house become bigger, the price will be higher. OK, so let's click area and also price. And you can see by default, they give us a scat plot. So although there is only one dot, but it is still a scat plot. Uh, it's showing the aggregated values. So let's say we want to use the average instead of total. OK, so average instead of total. OK, so that is average of all the house price versus average of the area. OK, uh, so, it, so that is uh, for the, all the records, the average of all the records. So what if I want to see the, the price for different type of the house. So what we can do is we can put house type into the detail. OK, so that is what they call the level of the detail. So if we look at uh, for the level of details, so we have four types of the house. So now we have the four markers. OK, so if you look at here, you can see we have four markers. So that is four type of the house. And you can also label the house, we can see the single family home. OK, and townhouse, condo, and also land a lot. OK, so that we look at the house types. So what if I want to see the individual records at the record at the record level? So to do that, we move out uh, of the house types, but we can add ID to the level of the details. So in this case, and we can see that uh, the price and also area. OK, so that is at each ID level of each single ID, which actually means that we are looking at unaggregated 
measures. Okay, because we are looking at the uh, uh, the record level. So it is equivalent that we, if we drag this out and also uncheck this aggregation. Okay, so that is same result. Okay, and also uh, remember that when we talk about scat plot, we normally put independent variable on the y axis. So we want to see that how the price is determined by area. We should put price on the y axis. So let's rotate this scat plot. Okay, so that that looks better. Okay, so areas and also price. All right, and we can also change the colors. So for example, if you want to look at different house types, you put house types here and also you can see the different type colors. Okay, and also you can use house type to show as different shape. Okay, and if you want to see the number of bathrooms as a size, we can also do that, although that is not recommended. Okay, I don't want to make that one to be too complicated. And we can also add the trend lines. Okay, and we can see that uh, the price is how the price is determined by the area. So that uh, R square is 0.5. Okay, uh, let's move that one out. And you can also add change the, the scales. Remember that this is arithmetic scaling. So if we double click the axis, we can use this log arithmetic. Okay. And we can convert that one back. And we can also change the price to the log arithmetic. Okay, so if that is a const if that is straight line, so that means the rate of the change is constant. Okay. Uh, let's move that one back. So you can also change the scalings. All right, so that is for this uh, scat plot. Uh, let's also hide the title here and similar for this one. All right, uh, so our last one is that we can we want to create a line chart to show the trend of the unit price over the years. So let's select unit price, hit control and also built in. And this time, let's use show me again. And you can see the line chart is uh, uh, the, the recommended one. So let's use that. However, by default, um, they are showing the, the total of the unit price. So let's change that one to the average. OK, so now we have this uh, line chart. OK, uh, we do have some outliers. So that's why that we have very extremely high unit price in those years, because we, we have very few records in those um, previous years. Of course, we can also add colors. So for example, if you want to put uh, the house type into different colors. OK, and we can see uh, we have a few records for townhouse condo our land a lot okay and uh, you can also let's say put the uh, number of bad bedroom or bathrooms into the size so that is <laughs> okay um, and also if we have the month data or the quarter or day data so we can go into different temporal scales. However, right now we only have the year information, so we have used a year. And uh, here the year is in blue, so that means the year is considered as dimensions. Uh, so if you want to consider convert the year as uh, measures, you can move that one into this, like this. So now the, the temporal wall will now uh, treat as dimensions. So when you treat that as dimensions, uh, you can do some calculations like the compound growth rate. Okay, so that is the compound growth rate. So when you treat that one as uh, continuous data. 
uh, if you treat that one as uh, for uh, as categorical data, and now you can calculate uh, things will be different. So for example, in this case, uh, you will be able to calculate the year over year growth. Okay, so let's drag that one into a separate rows and let's look at the year over year growth. Okay. Uh, so now you can see the percentage of change of the year over the year growth. Okay, uh, so let's combine two charts together. So let's create a dual axis map. And also for the average price, so since we uh, we have one is line chart, so let's convert another original line chart into a bar chart. So let's change that one into bars. Okay, and if you don't like the color, so let's change the color as well. So this one, let's use uh, blue and also orange. Okay, and now you can see that uh, the change of the price and also year over year growth. You can see for this year we have the decreased unit price, so that's why we have this year over year growth, which is negative. Uh, let's also see the recent years. So let's see, move the year over year into the filter. Okay, so let's say we want just see the last 10 years. Okay, and we have a non value that is because for the first year we cannot calculate the, the growth, so uh, we can fill out that data. Okay, and we can see the year over year growth. So in this case, uh, this filter only apply to this single sheet. So the filter that we used on this line chart uh, will not work on the other sheets. All right, so finally, let's um, combine all those sheets together. Uh, so uh, you can choose your um, Um, the layout that you like and also uh, let's make sure that we put legend next to our chart and uh, let's choose an automatic um, layout okay and uh, actually I'm going to hide this legend and for this one let me choose the entire view Okay, uh, you can also adjust uh, those chart on your dashboard. Uh, so for example, uh, in this case, I don't want to show the, uh, the titles of each single sheet, uh, just to make it simple. Okay, and let's add a title. So that is our uh, third lab, so lab three. Okay, and if you like, we can also make this um, bar chart as a um, and enable that as a filter. So now, if we see if we want just see the uh, single family home, okay, and we can see the the value for single family home and condo, okay, and townhouse, okay, and also land or lot. Okay, for land a lot, we don't have any um, information in the in the last uh, ten years, so that's why the line chart is empty. All right, uh, so let's save this workbook. So we save that one to our OneDrive uh, folder. Okay, so that is lab three, and let's save it as lab three. Uh, so this time uh, we don't have any data that saved locally. Uh, that is because uh, we are using a, a live connection to our uh, MongoDB database. And now let's also save our export our image. So uh, so that is also lab three. Okay, so that is for this lab. So. 
uh, we connected Tableau to our relational database and we're using um, cre we created several uh, basic visualizations uh, some of those visualizations may a little bit advanced because we use uh, dual axis uh, dual x um, visualizations and also we use some uh, uh, table calculations and finally we have this very nice uh, uh, dashboard.